Hello and welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. I am back at my painting table slapping a few paints on some classic old Hammer miniatures. This time I am painting one of the old Barrow Whites from Citadel's early line of Lord of the Rings miniatures. I have actually already showcased this chap on the channel in a previous video, and I talked about how he had a crack in the front of his tattered robes that I had to cut out and fill with green stuff. Rather than retread all that old ground, I will put a link in the video description below for that earlier discussion, and we can crack on with the painting. But one final note first, we have had a lot of new subscribers on the channel recently who may not be aware. My painting guides are intended to be quick and easy. The idea is to paint to a decent standard for everyday tabletop use. For people who want to spend more time playing than painting, or people who are new to painting and want something straightforward to follow. With that out of the way, we can begin. As you can see, I have spray primed this miniature using Ghoul Grey from Colorforge. I could have gone with black, which would have helped with shading and making the whole miniature look a bit dingier, but grey is going to serve as a good base for the robes and bone. Speaking of bone, let's start with that. I'm going to use Skeleton Bone from Army Painter. I'm going to thin this down slightly and apply two coats to the face and the hands. I don't need to worry about being neat, I just need to get a solid base coat down at this point. Naturally, all those bony details need some shading, so I'm using Seraphim Sepia for that. You could use Agrax Earthshade, but the more yellowy tones of Seraphim Sepia works well for the bone. And I'm just going to slop this on, making sure the shade gets into the eyes and mouth. When it's completely dry, I can go back to Skeleton Bone and do a quick dry brush to help the details pop. Nice and easy. Of course, if you prefer, you can do layering here instead, but I think dry brushing is going to give us that slightly dusty and musty look for an old cadaver. And then, if you really want to, you can switch to a brighter colour like Screaming Skull, and you can do one final very light highlight on the most raised details. That's an optional step, if you really want to make those details pop. With the bones all finished, I want to very quickly paint the handle of the knife. I'm going to use Dryad Bark, which is a very unusual dark brown colour. I'm also going to use this to paint the inside of the hanging part of the sleeves, just to darken up that area. Next, I'm going to move on to the metallic paints. I'm going to do some silver and some bronze. So first, I'm going to use Lead Belcher. This is going to be for the helmet, the blade of the knife, the chain in the left hand, and also all of the chainmail elements. I am thinning the paint slightly so it doesn't clag up the finer details, and I'm trying to get smooth, even coverage. When that's dry, I can use some Nuln Oil to do a wash over all the lead belcher. You know the drill. We want to make all the details stand out, and we just need to make sure we don't overspill onto the bone areas. And when it's dry, we will go back and do some highlighting with the lead belcher. On the links of the chains, the rivets in the helmet, the knife blade, and so on. I am not highlighting the chainmail at all to keep it nice and dark. Then I am switching to Balthazar Gold. I'm going to use this to paint the breastplate, the trim of the chainmail shirt, the panels of the helmet, and also the trim on the sleeves. When that's dry, I will use some Agrax Earthshade to wash the gold areas. I could have used Seraphim Sepia for this. Do whatever feels right for you. Be a bit careful, but it doesn't matter if you get a bit on the chainmail. That will add to the overall grunginess of the miniature. Then I will go back to the Balthazar Gold just to pick out any small raised details, and that will finish the metal. So it's time to change our water. We do not want any metallic flecks getting into any of our other paints. With the water refreshed, we can move on to the robes. I could have gone for something a bit regal here, but I always like the idea of monstrous undead things shrouded in fabrics that look like rotting flesh. With that in mind, I am going to give the robes a coat of Rakarth flesh. I've thinned it slightly and I am applying two coats for good, even coverage. The usual. When it's completely dry, I'm going to use some Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm covering all of the robes with that, really getting into all of those details and giving the fabric more of a skin-like finish. As that dries, I am just going to get some white scar and I am very carefully going to dab that in the eye sockets for an unearthly glimmer. I was considering applying a layer of Hex Wraith Flame over the eyes to give them a green glow, something really unnatural, but I like the pure white, so I have decided to leave it like that. Back to the robes, and I am using more Rakarth Flesh. 
I have thinned it and I am layering up some highlights on the raised pleats in the fabric, focusing on smooth layers and keeping out of the recesses. And if you want to, as you build up the layers, add a very small amount of pallid witch flesh to your Rakarth flesh towards the end for a final highlight. The last thing I need to do is make the fabric look more mildewy, dirty and old. More washes will help with that. First, Athonian camo shade. I'm just going to sparingly put a little of this into recesses in a sort of splotchy manner. I just want a sense of rot and decay within the folds of the fabric and under the arms. When the camo shade is almost dry, we can do the same thing with Seraphim Sepia, but I'm being even more sparing here. I really just want to get some extra texture and mottling into these robes without overdoing it. After that, if you want to, you could paint some Agrax Earthshade just around the hem of the robe to make it look dirty, like it has been dragged through the mud. But if you are happy with what you have, just leave it at that and we can move on to one final small detail. This is something you may have seen me do in other videos. First I'm going to get some Army Painter Dragon Red and I'm going to get a brush with slightly splayed bristles. I'm going to use the brush to whip the paint across the edge of the knife to create a bit of a blood splatter. And the fact that the bristles of the brush are splayed will really help to get a spray effect. And because I want it to look like an old dry blood stain, when that paint is dry, I am going to switch to chestnut ink, something from my very, very old collection of paints. Any similar thin coppery brown color should do the trick. I'm going to water it down because it has a very strong pigmentation and then I will paint a very small amount over the blood splatter. This is really going to help to make that blood splatter look old. That finishes this model except for of course the base. I'm not going to do that in this video, I have a separate video talking about how I paint all my bases for Advanced Hero Quest, so I will link to that in the video description and you can check it out there if you haven't seen it before. But once that base is painted, all I will need to do is give this chap a spray of matte varnish, glue a magnet under his base so I can store him in one of the crates I have lined with steel rubber, and then he is ready whenever I need him to cause trouble in the dungeon. Nice and quick and easy. And that is it from me for now, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so, and hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.